Hey guys, what's up? I'm Lex and welcome back to my channel. In my last video, we were just finishing up my fuel system that we got from Aeromotive and it's finally done. It turned out super cool and I'm really excited to show you guys. So let's go check it out. Well guys, here she is. Look how freaking good this turned out. Jordan really outdid himself. I'm so impressed with how well this turned out. I love how it's like flush with the floor. So there's plenty of room for groceries and all those trips to Target. It is just absolutely gorgeous. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the video over to him and he's gonna tell you all about it since this is kind of his baby. Hey guys, I'm Jordan, I'm Lex's husband. I'm gonna go through some of the details on the fuel system. Uh, we're gonna show a couple of videos along the way of setting it up. And then we're gonna go through some of the data that made the decision of why we were gonna go this route versus some other options available. Uh, the fuel pump itself is Aeromotive's five gallon per minute brushless gear pump. It does have a built-in variable speed controller. It's sitting in a 15 gallon fuel cell. The rails are fed with a dash 10 braided PTFE line uh, with a dash eight return. Uh, the fuel filter is just in, on the bottom side of the car in front of the cradle. And the fuel pressure regulator is actually mounted in the cabin air filter box up front in the engine bay. This fuel system should be capable of supporting 1800 horsepower in a forced induction E85 setup. Um, being an in-tank pump that's relatively quiet with a variable speed controller should make it really ideal for a street and strip car application. Uh, let's get into some of those videos that show the setup. So here's a quick look at what we got going on inside the trunk of the G8 to fit the new Aeromotive fuel cell. The frame itself is a really simple inch and a quarter square tube frame. It's welded to the frame rails and gusseted. The sheet of aluminum is a filler to fill in the big hole left by the factory spare tire well. We originally used a sheet of plastic to mock up what this sheet would look like and had cut from that. Um, it's sealed around the perimeter, riveted down, and then there's nut certs around the perimeter of the cell. And that's to hold down the trim ring, which will go over top of the carpet. Uh, still have to do pass-throughs for the rollover vent, feed line, return, but overall it should look really clean. Everything fits really nicely between the rear diffuser, muffler heat shields, and uh, the rear sway bar. Um, this is a pretty simple process. Should be able to be done by about anybody in their home garage. I'm going to show you how I routed the feed line for the fuel system. It's the same location we used on the old returnless setup. Um, it actually runs through the factory mounts where your hard lines would have been for your feed and the evap system. Underneath the car, you're gonna find a bunch of these along the inside of the tunnel. Um, these smaller holes were, are where the brake lines pass through to the rear, and then you got your evap and feed line. What I did was cut out the rubber for the larger lines and pass that uh, braided line through there. Keeps the feed line out of harm's way, tucks it behind the heat shield for the transmission, and uh, I'll crawl under the car and show what that looks like. All right, I am now underneath the car. Um, bear with me, it's pretty tight under here on these Harbor Freight jack stands, but here you can see the 10 a.m. feed line coming up the passenger side of the engine bay. Um, here are the uh, brake lines running to the rear that it's gonna follow. If I peel back this heat shield, you can see that everything's tucked up out of the way nicely. Um, here's one of the brackets that's gonna pass through. If I slide back past the heat shield, you can see that they eventually make their way to this factory plastic cover that ran all the way to the OEM fuel tank. Um, here you can see that even a 10 AN feed line fits under this pretty well. Um, once you make it through this, it's a pretty straight shot up over the cradle to the fuel cell. Uh, I will also mention that the removal of the factory feed lines and the EVAP hard lines is much simpler with the engine and transmission out of the car. Let's go ahead and go over some data. Up on the screen is a flow and amperage draw chart. I'll go ahead and link those below. On the left is from Aeromotive showing the flow data from my pump. The first thing I want to point out is how well the pump maintains flow rate as pressure increases. And then the graph on the right is flow data from a single Walboro 450. 
I'm using this pump for comparison as they are used in my old setup and they're very commonly used on this platform in a dual or triple configuration. Assuming a 58 pound base fuel pressure and a one to one increase in fuel pressure with boost, it doesn't take much for the brushless gear pump to outperform a triple 450 setup with similar advertised flow rate and at the amperage draw of less than half. So we mentioned a few times that the pump has a variable speed controller. This can be set up a couple different ways, actually a lot of different ways. Throttle position, boost, RPM, even just a simple toggle switch to have it run at full speed. Uh, we decided we wanted to uh, run our controller based off of boost pressure because it seems like the best representation of fuel demand. Uh, for example, if you were using a throttle position sensor or RPM based, uh, it would be increasing the pump speed during a burnout or even with the car revving in neutral uh, where there's not a huge fuel demand necessary. And our good friend John, who also has a badass G8, hooked us up with the information on some pressure sensors. Pressure sensors, thank you. And those are from Low Dollar Motorsports. I'm going to go ahead and link those below and we will post up some information on those as well. And we'll go through some of the data on the particular sensor we chose to go with. And that. So this chart shows the output voltage from the zero to 15 pound pressure sensor that we will be using. The variable speed controller has a minimum pump speed of 30% at a voltage reading of 0.5 or lower. And it ramps this pump up to 100% speed at 3.7 volts. So based off of this chart, our fuel pump will reach 100% output at 12 pounds of boost. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it informative. Aeromotive was an awesome company to work with and I can't wait to put their fuel system to the test. I linked everything below in the description. If you guys have any questions, go ahead and drop those in the comments. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow me on Instagram, xox underscore mislex. And I'll catch you guys in my next video. See ya!